Hey everyone, Rascal here. And Mama. Welcome to our and special and <laughs> And welcome to our special edition Comic Con podcast. Yes. And yep. so, so today we are discussing some of the panels we saw today for San Diego's uh, at home Comic Con. And our special guest is the illustrious Phoenix Rising, yeah. General Phoenix! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so, we're going to talk about uh, Crunchyroll panel, going through Marvel 616, New Mutants, down to Marvel HQ, and we hope that you have fun. If you did get a chance to see it, make sure you let us know what you think in the comments below. But before we get started... Oh yeah, be sure to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get updates in future podcasts and World of Pause videos. And visit General Phoenix's channel. Yes, on here and Twitter. <laughs> so, Phoenix, thank you for yeah. joining us today. It's awesome that you joined us. Yeah, it's a very pleasure to join you guys for your podcast on San Diego Comic-Con at home. Yes. Yes. So we're going to get started with the country roll. A uh, country roll. Country, country roll. Are we going to eat now? Uh, <laughs> we went to eat the crunchy roll panel. It better be crunchy if I'm going to eat it. And we got to be introduced to some crunchy roll original, <laughs> original programming. So, Phoenix, you start us off. What did you think of uh, what they had to offer today on that panel? Hmm. Honestly, I think it was pretty awesome, and they did show really good stuff for that. I mean, yes. Mm -hmm. um, so far, we did get to see lots of anime. Well, kind of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, some originals that were mentioned were The Time uh, I Was Reincarnated as a Slime uh, with a... Oh, I want to see. With a dog and a cat, everything is fun. Definitely want to see that. Mm -hmm. Food Wars Season 5, The Hidden Dungeon, Only I Can Enter. I don't want to do that. Oh, I don't know what and that is. Monster Girl yeah. Doctor, which was totally different than we expected. Yeah. <laughs> but they looked fun. Right. And we kind of expected a little bit of a different thing because when they had the opening and closing to the panel, they had a sort of... A collage of these different anime like Dr. Stone and stuff and that stuff that they showed there did not show up in the actual panel so we were kind of like what were you telling us was in here again but it got <laughs> us to watch <laughs> so what were you expecting <laughs> what were you expecting Phoenix from this uh, panel that you did not get <laughs> well I was expecting for more of Bleach Thousand Year Blood War on coming mm -hmm. soon next year mm-hmm mm -hmm. Along with, you know, the and more of, you know, the final episodes of One Piece. Yes. Yeah, I'm expecting those too. I've just seen the announcements. Definitely. And uh, we were we were expecting to see some news about My Hero Academia, about like season five and stuff since season four is coming out and we got Heroes Rising coming out on right. the DVD. So it looks like yeah. it was more of an opportunity to showcase their own shows and their own talent. Mm -hmm. The information I do like that we got is learning that they have a manga app um, and they also had Card, was it Card Captor Sakura coming out on that. Mm -hmm. So it'd be interesting, you know, to get the app <laughs> online because they're on my phone and uh, read some of the mangas that's exclusive to Crunchyroll. So that was good. And I have to say that both of the presenters were very high energy. They made it a lot of fun. And it was very exciting, even though it was just the two of them there and they were switching off um, one to the other. Mm. They had a giveaway, mm. so they really put out an effort to make it fun, and I think they did. I just would have liked to have seen more of their non-original content focused on as well. But they did a great job. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And I also, I also was expecting to hear more about Borto, the Naruto spinoff, along right. with an uh, Inuyasha spinoff coming soon. That would have been great. Yeah. Yeah, they mentioned a little bit about the Boruto, and it, it wasn't even a minute. It was more like a, I think it was a game. Right. It was a game with right. Naruto and Boruto together, so mm -hmm. so that's what they ended up being the lineup when they're advertising some uh, app games. So that would have been good. So next year, 
Uh, maybe you can get us some more content on some shows that aren't exclusive to Crunchyroll in addition to your own content. That would make it awesome. Right. Okay, next up we got Marvel 616, which is one that Phoenix chose for us. And yeah. it was pretty interesting. So, Phoenix, tell us a little more about that and we'll join in. Well, it did tell us, you know, some news and that the creators, you know, like how they did amazing things back in the day. And they did give us really good comics and on the characters that need to be in the cinematic universe one day. Mm -hmm. And that there are some TV shows that are planning to come out soon mm -hmm. on Disney+. Plus. Yes. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> And we also got to see the um, the female who was the inspiration for Miss Marvel. Yeah, and that was pretty. Yep. That was absolutely cool to see. Mm-hmm. And they Definitely. also in they're showing yeah, like I said, the inspirations behind uh, bringing these characters alive, who they're based off of. Mm -hmm. And then they also had a preview for uh, an episode or a little documentary for they have their more obscure and bizarre characters that people do not know about. Like, they have one that's sort of like a discount Doctor Strange, and they have one <laughs> that's a, a villain that is like a sign maker villain and stuff. So they have all sorts of oddball characters that are now being noticed. It's like you never knew existed. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right now, Marvel is going to do a Shang-Chi film, and none of us know much about him along with the Eternals, but... The films will be great next year. Yes. Yes, absolutely. They're, I think both of them are just going to be really, just just really epic films for this, this universe. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to it. So, uh, Phoenix, tell us, what did you get you were looking for, and what did you not get you were expecting to see? Well, I did get some news about the Illuminati coming soon to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Cool. Oh, okay. That should be interesting. Can't wait to see what that's about. Yeah. Yes. And that the Fantastic Four and the X-Men will join the MCU soon. Yay. Awesome. Yes, another reboot is needed. All right. So we get <laughs> to see more of these uh, Fox-owned films joining the universe, like with uh, like with Blade and Deadpool. Oh, I can't wait for Blade. And they didn't talk about that. I can't believe Yeah. That. No one mentioned Blade. What the heck happened? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so I wish they had mentioned Blade, and I also wish yeah. there had been some appearances by some voice actors or some uh, live movie, uh, live action uh, movie stars. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah you not mean the Beverly Hillbillies. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I wish we had seen some stars. I really wanted yeah. to see that. Yeah. And they were missing. I wanted to see Brie Larson so bad and talk news about Captain Marvel 2 and Tom Holland on Spider-Man 3. Definitely. Yes. It, it, even if it had been like a, a, a clip, like maybe 30 seconds, they could have had maybe 30 seconds of each person, I would have been happy with that because at least they would have made an appearance. Mm -hmm. Even if it had been pre-recorded and it had been made specifically for the Comic-Con, that would have been great, but right. there was nobody. Yeah, it was just like, go. Uh, What's up? What these movies do not exist right now. <laughs> it, it's just this stuff we're gonna have on Disney Plus, which could be very entertaining. But you want you're really there. The main thing you're really there for is the MCU movies. Right. So to go to a Marvel MCU panel and not talk about the MCU seems counterproductive. Like uh, you're working backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, because there's like so many movies and shows and stuff they announced are all coming together and like new characters, and then you're really not hearing much about them. Like after the announcement, they just stop talking about it all together. Right. So we did attend that, and we got some things we wanted and some things we didn't. <laughs> so now we'll move on to New Mutants, and this is all Phoenix. Tell us about it. Yes. Well, the New Mutants is the new the next generation and coming soon. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and yes, it got delayed like twice and again and again, but now it's finally coming out 2020. Awesome. awesome. This year. Yes. And we know you've right. really been excited and expecting, really excited about seeing this, I should say. We hear you yes. talk about New Mutants a lot and you post a lot on Twitter about it. So tell us why this is a special uh, movie for you. 
because the new moon sounds really interesting and because they are the next generation of the X-Men and it will be one of the darkest X-Men movies ever like Venom was. Mm. Mm. Even darker than Dark Phoenix? Yes, okay. very dark. Mm. Okay. And it will have some jump scares. Why the jump scares? Oh, wow. Yeah, you know, we actually saw part of that at the last time we went to the movies and they had a New Mutants trailer and we didn't know it was the New Mutants until it got to, they mentioned the word mutants because uh, they really had it mm-hmm. made like a horror movie like something like something was coming after them or something so they really kept true to the genre of it being a pretty horror like film with the way this is going mm-hmm. yep but you know this movie will be pretty good and yep they just gave us you know, an early leak that it won't be in theaters, I think. It might be on Disney Plus in September. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. So that means you got to have a subscription or you don't get to see it. Yeah. yeah. Or that's happening, a, that's happening a lot now due to the events that have taken place recently. Mm-hmm. So much is yeah. coming out uh, streaming instead of being able to see it. Uh, in a movie theater, so it's going to be a real yeah. different experience when this does come out. You won't be seeing it on big screen. You'll be seeing it in the privacy of your home on whatever size screen you have. So hopefully they'll be able to uh, make this movie still have that big impact it would if you were seeing it on a big screen. Right. Yeah. But they did say it might come out next month in August. Mm-hmm. They might. Well, we'll oh. keep our fingers crossed. Yeah, it's and hopefully they don't change it right like some others have been delayed, like Mulan and Avatar and some other movies mm-hmm. have been delayed. Yeah, Avatar, the Netflix series. Hmm. Oh, oh okay. yeah, oh yeah, yeah, that is coming out. That's true. Okay. Yeah. Well, last up we have Marvel HQ, which is totally unlike anything we expected to experience today, and yeah. um, it was advertised as for. A family viewing, and they definitely did stick with that. Right. So, you guys, tell us more about our Marvel XQ, X, X, bleh, Marvel HQ experience. Right. <laughs> yeah, I love Marvel Bear. I might be right. <laughs> Marvel <Double> Bear. <laughs> okay. So, Marvel HQ actually does have a YouTube channel, if you look, and they do post like full episodes of different uh, Marvel TV shows or clips and interviews and so forth. And for here, they had advertised like a few things to do with the family. So, so first thing we have this family thing is drawing Venom with his tongue out for 18 minutes! <laughs> 18 minutes! <laughs> 18 minutes of drawing Venom, intricate detail, and you make sure you get that tongue right, because it's all about the tongue. You better draw his tongue. Why are you so obsessed with his tongue? And Phoenix was a trooper. He was so patient with the uh, artist, and we were doing nothing but ragging on him. We're so sorry. And then after that, we got to see Felicia Day, who I love from Supernatural, as Charlie till they killed her off. Oh. And we yeah. learned that she is the voice of... Um, Mary Jane Watson. Yes. yes, yes. She's in the Maximum Venom arc for the animated Spider-Man series. Which so far is really good. Yeah. So, yeah, so they have this big, big star voicing her. And so far, we have seen about the first two or three episodes of Maximum Venom. And we're really having a great time watching it and seeing this arc unfold. How many have you watched, Phoenix? Um, so far, I've watched, like, 15, I think. Oh, wow. wow. They're a long arc, don't they? Yeah, I guess if you have a uh, cable Xfinity, you don't get to see as much. Oh my gosh, yeah, because they have not posted any more episodes since the first two. Like, they had Baby Groot one episode, and then that's it. They just stopped. <laughs> we demand restitution. Right. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh... And then we got to see a clip. Yes, yes, they got a clip of uh, introducing the, uh, uh, Mary Jane. Mm-hmm. So Very yeah, short clip. Yeah. I remember his reaction. He was so hyped. Right. <laughs> yes. Really short clip. Very, very minute clip. Really yeah. It was a clip what? that it was so quick you could have missed it. Yeah, it's like, wait a minute, there was a clip? <laughs> By the time it was over, you didn't know it was a clip. Till they said, oh, I'll catch it this summer. 
Wait, that was it? <laughs> but it was great to see Felicia Day and very happy to see her join the cast. And she's going to do an awesome job because she is just awesome. She also has her own podcast channel on YouTube. Check it out. It is awesome. Yep. Yes. And after that, there was a Lego building. So we'll let Phoenix tell us more about the Lego building. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it was kind of like a Transformers. The Venom Decepticon coming soon. I was like, order now. (laughs) (laughs) It's it's Megatron's newest uh, recruit. No, I mean, they would have loved that a lot. Right? So, yeah, it pretty much looks exactly what you said. So, putting it together, they just, um... They had an unboxing. It's sort of like we see these unboxing videos on YouTube and they kind of show you step by step of what they do. So they did that, but they fast forward through the whole process so you're kind of seeing it not done in real time, but just right. then putting it together piece by piece and then you'll see the finished product by the end, which you could do at home, I guess. So I think part of that reason it was done is because remember the Lego, they had a Lego series short lived where people were competing and it was on Fox. Yeah, so uh, they got that plug in. Yeah, it was uh, Lego Lego Masters. Yes, and we were we were we were so happy until about the last three episodes, and then we were whelmed. Yeah, it's like, Just yeah, word, I think. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, to uh, let's uh, oh, wrap it up oh, and find out what each of us really thought about this Comic Con. Let's be honest and no holes barred. But first, Rascal. Oh wait, there was one more part from the HQ that I guess maybe is the reason why we didn't talk about it. <laughs> um, they um. One of the people that worked on the show decided to do a live comic reading of oh, yeah. a little kid's books. It was like a Marvel Spidey Adventures. And they were like mm-hmm. smaller, chibi. chibi versions of Spider-Man and Spider-Gwen. That's true. And they go into the virtual world to stop whoever's controlling the Fortnite game, which they cannot say Fortnite because of copyright. And then and then the guy tries to sell like Morgan Freeman. <laughs> and... Uh, he just, <laughs> it's just Morgan, I guess him, oh, uh, it's just, okay, here's what it's called. Man, it was written to Morgan. Right. Morgan Freeman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, oh written to Morgan Freeman, tries to read a Spider-Man comic while always sounding at the same monotone tone. <laughs> that yes, was the I, whole part. I literally forgot about it, so yeah, that wasn't good. Oh, man. But they... <laughs> They did make it family friendly as they promised. Right. So, Phoenix, tell us your final thoughts on our Comic Con experiences today. Hmm. Well, honestly, it was pretty okay, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I still wish we could have seen more. That's, yeah, I wish we could have saw more. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. we could have gotten the trailers for the Eternals. That would have been and, cool. we also, and we also could have gotten more, you know, information about the Justice League Zack Snyder cut. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been cool. And, yep, that would have been cool. Yeah, I'm expecting trailers for like, a lot of things. Because remember, last year you got one for Spider-Man, you got for Endgame, you got for... The Netflix shows that they probably didn't have at the time, but you had a lot of trailers and stuff for upcoming content, where it was on Disney+, Plus, Netflix, theatrical, whatever, but this year, they didn't have any trailers for anything, not Shang-Chi, not Eternals, not Blade, not, nothing, not even in like a progress report or a behind-the-scenes thing, they just... After the announcement, it's just like the MCU is completely left out of the convention itself. There is no mention of it being in a panel mm-hmm. or any Marvel themed panels to begin with. It's like MCU's canceled this year or something. Yeah, and don't forget Phase Five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like what, what movies are coming after Phase Four? It's like nothing's there. It's really, really strange. Now, yeah. I, think, I think it was great that they attempted to give us an experience. Still, so that we don't miss out. Mm-hmm. Uh, as you mentioned, there were some trails and things that were absent. Also, there was an absence of voice actors and stars, live action. Uh, there was an absence of uh, some of the Anime. icons that we love. Mm-hmm. Uh, and 
that really made the experience very different from those of us who've never been to a live action Comic Con. Mm-hmm. So if they None end up time. definitely if they end up doing this again next year, we really ask that you, you you give us that experience with some of the stars that we love, we want to see, and make it a really exciting at home experience. Now, granted, maybe there wasn't enough time, or maybe there are other reasons it didn't happen, but maybe there can be plans made for either. Uh, option whether it's going to be in person or online and that way we get the full experience the next time right also yeah. merchandising the s- demand exceeded supply and on twitter there's a whole lot of people commenting on their disappointment in, of having to stay online uh the buffering waiting 30 minutes to an hour not to get the items that were in their baskets and merchandising is running out everywhere. So maybe next time you guys can make sure that your supply exceeds or at least meets demand because part of the Comic-Con experience, from what I understand, is being able to buy exclusive merchandise only available during the event. And with so many people not being able to get it, well, that leaves a not-so-positive impression for a whole lot of people that were trying to purchase. Right. But other than that, I would have to say... This has so far been a great experience. I'm looking forward to doing the Tokyo Pop panel tomorrow. Oh, yeah. And then seeing (laughs) what we're going to watch for Saturday. Phoenix, are there any more panels you're going to be attending tomorrow on Saturday? I don't know. I'll I'll have to think about that first. All right. Let's go. Other than the Bugs Bunny one, um, maybe, maybe we can find some more stuff about, you know, the... Anime specifically, maybe they'll finally have some panels talking about, you know, besides Crunchyroll, maybe about, you know, Bleach and Hero Academia. Tokyo Pop's going to talk about manga. Okay, so, so maybe that that's we can do that with the Tokyo Pop. Right. So that's really yeah. what I'm looking for since there was no MHA panel this year for it. Exactly. So whatever we end up seeing, we'll let you know about it in the podcast. Definitely Tokyo Pop. And whatever we end up watching on Saturday, we will bring you a, a report just as we have now. And I would like at this time for us to give a round of applause for Phoenix, General Phoenix. Woo! Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. It's been awesome and amazing and look forward to him joining us on future podcasts. He is awesome. Yeah. Yep. Oh, thank girls. You're so sweet. <laughs> thank you. And you're sweet too. Yes. <laughs> so. All right. So, oh, before we sign off, be sure to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get updates on future podcasts and we'll pause videos. And if you attended any of the panels at home, let us know what you think in the comments below. What were your favorites? Which ones could have been better? And if you've actually attended Comic-Con in person, let us know how this measures up for you. And last but not least, visit General Phoenix's uh, YouTube and channel. On YouTube and visit my Twitter account. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> and we will have that available in the end card, so you can click and just go there. And also, as he mentioned, go to Twitter because we have lively and fun conversations with the and the anime Twitter community on Twitter. Yep. Yep. So, yep. so I'm Ask Entertainment. I'm Mom Entertainment. And I'm General Phoenix. Have a tuntastic day. Peace. In the mountaintops, rivers, and streams, plucking sunlight from the sky in my pocket, giving to you later on in the form of a locket. People in the back, for the people in the front, for the people on the side.